What is up, Duelist? MD here, and today I'm going to be coming out to you all with my Odd Eyes Dart Magician deck. Now, this deck I have been working on for a long, long time now, about half a year, and like I have just made so many different changes and progress to this deck. And even though we just had that banlist hit us recently, hasn't really hurt the deck. All it means is that you got to be a little more strict with it. But let me tell you something this deck can pull off some crazy things. Like, it's a very fun deck. But the only reason I would not say it's competitive and something you can't really take past your locals is the consistency. Like, this deck has gone from wiping the floor with Burning Abyss and Monarchs to just completely losing to a low budget, low tier deck. But this is a Pendulum deck and minus anything Perform Power or Draco Slayers, that's kind of what you're going to expect with Pendulum decks. But... Still, nonetheless, great contender out of locals. I'm even proud to say I've managed to make a top eight with this once. And yeah, it's very unexpected and, and can just has the potential to overpower anything. So without further ado, I'm gonna get into it. First of all, the main material of the deck is going to be three copies of Dark Magician. Now, just a little, quick little thing. This one, I am proud to say, even though damage, original structure deck that I managed to get off a trade. So very happy about that. Yeah, I don't normally go rarity hunting, but as you can see, Dark Magician is my exception. <laughs> but no, yeah. So level 7, normal spellcaster. Again, you use them for many, many different things in the deck other than just attacking. And what good is the Master Magician without his little impresses to go along with it? One copy of Dark Magician Girl. Now, I just have her mainly as a level 6 to use for my Synchros and XC plays. But it's also fun, just like when I'm setting up an OTK, just to have her on the field. And like, I have never seen my opponent get angry at losing whenever I bring her out. So, <laughs> it's always a fun little thing there. So, she can be used for some materials as well. And heck, you can even go old school and use her effect. Say if you get like two or three Dark Magicians in your graveyard, use her as a powerful beat stick to just overpower. So, yep, you got those. And again, those have many, many uses that will go through. Now, the second main boss of the deck is going to be three copies of Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon. Now, guys, let me tell you something right now. Yugi and Yuya would have made an amazing tag team because Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon and Dark Magician both make just an amazing tag team. They have so much synergy together. Like, they're like peanut butter and jelly. And that's not the Dark Magician card I wanted to use, but yeah. Say something like peanut butter, jelly. They just go together like that, and they just help each other so much. Now, I'm going to stop rambling and go on about the actual Odd Eyes card. Very good card. You can put it on your Pendulum scale and on your end phase. It gets destroyed, and you can search for a Pendulum monster with 1,500 or less attack. Any Pendulum monster whatsoever, so it's really good for that. Again, a level 7, 25 seems to be the thing with all main characters. And this one has a cool effect where if you attack your opponent and it deals damage, the battle damage is doubled. So say you're attacking like a Royal Magical Library with zero attack, you end up doing 5,000 damage. So pretty good, pretty good. And just like Dark Magician, this is used for many, many other purposes. So yeah, set him to the side. And now for the Pendulum Magician part. Three copies of Oath Dragon and three copies of Dragon Pit. Now, these are going to be your main scales for the deck to allow you to Pendulum Summon. Now, before the ban list, I actually only ran Oath Dragon at 2, but this is kind of what I mean how you have to be a little more strict with the deck. Before, you could add a lot of Dark Magician stuff to it, make it a lot more fun and still competitive, but all the ban list means is that you have to play more Odd Eyes Magician, be able to splash some of the Dark Magician mechanic in there, but that's all it is, so... Oath Dragon, second scale, two scale, and Dragon Pit, eight scale. Oath Dragon's your main one, being able to get stuff from your graveyard and your extra deck into your hand. Not to mention a level six, which is very important. And same thing with Dragon Pit Magician, level seven, and a vanilla non-effect spellcaster, which is also very important. Also, a quick little thing here. Even though Oath Dragon has a pendulum effect, he is still treated as a non-effect card because of the fact that he has no monster effect. So monster wise, he is still non-effect. So very, very good thing to know about here. 
And Dragon Pit also serves as a way to eliminate back row if need be, because like any Pendulum deck, back row is a serious problem. So, also one copy of Skulker Bad Joker. Now this, this was the most hurtful band for us right here. Ugh. Tell you what, this, that, that's actually how I managed to win top, well not win top eight, I, because of this being a three. This card's so amazing, able to get out any odd eyes, any perform pal, at, or any pendulum magician card. So, very, very amazing stuff right there. Not to mention level four, always, always good. Now for some scales, I run one dragon pulse, one time breaker, one wisdom eye, one time gazer, one jonke, and one Noble Dragon Magician. Jeanke is a level 725, mainly a beat stick and stuff, and another skill since he's at a th three scale, but he also has like this effect that can pull off an insanely awesome combo, which he can basically make any XC's monster able to be used as a material for another XC's summon. And where that comes in handy, I will gladly show you guys in the extra deck. It's actually really awesome. Now. Time Gazer is mainly just so I have another scale eight. Right there, you can see. Um, I'm not really too big a fan of him, but he's really like the only other one we have. I know some people like to use Zhang Shing Magician, but my main problem with that is that it goes to a four if you control more cards than your opponent. And you used to be able to use Wisdom Eyes of normal effects to at least make that back to its original scale, but ever since we only got it to one, yeah, I, I personally don't want to risk it. But honestly, like I said, mainly Time Gazer in here because another eight and basically the only one. If we get another rank eight, um, pen, not rank eight, bleh, what am I saying? Another scale eight Pendulum Magician card, I would gladly use that over this. But I mean, he's not bad. He could protect your scales from getting destroyed at times. So Noble Dragon is going to be your main Synchro Monster. Synchro Monster, Tuner Monster to create the Synchros. But you can't really use her as a scale. I mean, you technically could, but if there's no magician monster in there, she gets destroyed. So, kind of, kind of iffy on that. But it's got the effect where if you have an odd eyes on the field or great, yeah, on the field, you could special summon this from your hand or graveyard, and that odd eyes monster becomes a level four. So you be so that's a free synchro right there. Very good. Wisdom eye. Now, even though this guy hit at one. This did not hurt it as bad as I thought, because at first I was so worried, like, oh no, this deck's gone now with Wisdom Eye on, but no, it's not. Mainly because of Ove Dragon, where you could just recycle it over and over again. So, say you have your two scales here, you destroy Wisdom Eye, and you replace this with another scale. Now, quick thing you should be, I should tell you guys about. Even though Time Breakers, of, yeah, Time Gazer, I'm sorry. Time Gazer is a fact that he can only be activated if you control no monsters. Even if you control a monster, you can still Wisdom Eye to replace the scale here. Just a little ruling I thought you guys should know. And now finally for these two cards. Dragon Pulse is, ma is mainly there just another level 4. Now Time Breaker Magician. I feel that this card is heavily overlooked and underestimated. And here's why. First of all, he's good on the scales because once per turn, during either turn, he protects your Pendulum Monsters month, once you're being destroyed by car effects. So, let's say they don't want a Regeki, Dark Hole, Bottomless, just anything that would end up destroying them all through a car effect, he protects them once. So, very good on that. And also, when he's on the field, this and one other monster your opponent controls, you can target them both, banish them both, and they come back on your next standby phase. So. Good way to get rid of a troublesome monster until then. And also, if you pendulum him from your hand and he's the only one you pendulum summon, his attack is doubled. So his attack's at 14, he goes to 28, and it does not end. Like, it permanently stays 28 until he leaves the field. So, again, heavily overlooked card. I find myself going back and forth between run running one and two, but I realize that I need another level four. So, that's the main reason why he's not at two. And again, Dragon Pulse, he's okay, mainly just another level four, good for getting rid of some monsters. Same thing as Dragon Pit's effect to pop back rocks so or pop a monster. And again, it's okay. Once again, mainly just another rank four, rank four, level four. Wow, where is my mouth today? All right, next up from Pendulum, we're gonna be running one Monkey Board, two copies of Magic Specter Unicorn Kirin, one Abai Adai Saber Dragon, and one Tuning Magician. Now, Tuning Magician, just another way to play Synchros, which you can special summon from your hand or graveyard if you control both scales or 
Magician Pendulum Monsters, but it gets banished when it leaves the field. So, pretty nice stuff. Oh, and you also burn, you burn 400 and your opponent gains 400 life points. So, you, you gotta be a little bit careful when using that, but still comes in handy very much. Odd Eye Saber Dragon, I just mainly have it here as like a level seven and just another boss monster, just overpower stuff. Cause if it destroys one monster by battle, you could destroy another one of your opponent's monsters. So it's good for clearing the board. Not to mention a 28 attack is always pretty decent. Now the next up being here, the two Magic Spectre cards. If you Pendulum summon this card, now I know a lot of people like to run Odd Eye, no, not Avox, something like that, that Phoenix card. That's similar to this, but I feel this is kind of better because of the fact that like any time during either player's turn, you could target a Pendulum monster and another monster your opponent controls and you pop them back both to hand. So let's say they just worked on a monster that took them a lot of resources to get through. Boom, right off the bat, all that was just for nothing. So 200 attack can be targeted or destroyed by card effects. Really awesome through a Magic Spectre card. And also once again, a level six spellcaster, which again comes in handy very much. And the monkey board's mainly just to search for your Skulker Bad Joker and to make a cool little fusion, which I'll show you guys in a bit. All right, now for the spells of the deck. Now, yeah, almost everything else here is spells. So three copies of Pendulum Call, absolutely essential. At three, cannot run any less than that. It allows you to search off your Pendulum Magician scales and for the fact that until the end of your opponent's next turn that your scales cannot be destroyed by card effects. So definitely, definitely amazing there. And next up, two copies of Sky Iris and two copies of Terraforming. Terraforming is just to search these bad boys off. Now these bad boys right here, you set them there, you set your scales. This, this, this allows it so your scales cannot be targeted by your opponent's card effects. So if they want to like MST, Twin Twisters, anything like that, nope, they can't do it. And also another amazing effect is that you can destroy one monster that you control or card. It can even be a scale, it can be any card you control. Destroy and you search for any Odd Eyes card. That can be Odd Eyes Monster, Odd Eyes Spell, anything with Odd Eyes in its name, this can search off. So definitely an amazing card here. Next up is going to be two copies of Summoner's Art. Now this is why Ed said it was important to notice that Dragon Pit counts as a vanilla non-effect monster, even though it has a pendulum effect, because this can search off Dragon Pit as well as Dark Magician. Now I know a lot of people only run this as one in most eyes Magician decks, but since it's Dark Magician, that's why I'm running at two. So even though you have like maybe a scale two or three and don't have a way to get a scale eight except Summoner's Art, boom. Right there, you have Summoner's Art to get out the Dragon Pit Magician, or if need be, Dark Magician right off the bat. So, amazing, amazing card in the deck. Definitely, I mean, you could run three if you wish. I just never see a problem with two. And next up, going to be my draw cards. One, Allure of Darkness. One, Sacred Sword of the Seven Stars. And one, Upstar Garland. Now, I know Allure of Darkness just got recently updated to two. But I find running one of each is a lot better for me, mainly because yes, there's a lot of dark monsters I controlled that are not level seven, but at the same time, there's a decent amount of level seven monsters that are not dark types. So I find running a mix of both is uh, so I almost never have a useless draw card, but both of them require banishing one. So, and honestly, banishing one isn't too big a deal because usually with the draw, you could usually draw into something that can win you the game right then and there, so. And the upstart just to basically make this a 39 card deck. I hate the fact that this got limited to one. To me, it just made no sense whatsoever. So, but oh well, that's Konami for you. And lastly, gonna go into my last spell and my traps. One copy of Twin Twisters, have one copy of Bottomless Trap Hole, and one copy of Solemn Warning. And I apologize for that banging there. That's probably my baby brother. Now, a lot of people will probably choose to run Solemn Strike. But the only thing is that is way out of my budget. <laughs> yeah, 70 bucks for a card just, oish. Definitely gonna break the bank there. So, yeah, these are just my cheap roll trainers. I mean, if you have strikes on you, then go for it. It's an amazing card. But if you're like me and have to stick to a budget, these are very, fairly, very cheap cards and still very effective.
And also the Twin Twister is mainly just to get rid of some back row on top of the Dragon Pit effect. So you have plenty of ways to get rid of back row in the deck. Just put all that there. And now gonna come at you guys with the extra deck. And I'm gonna start off here with the fusions. So one copy of Beast Dies Pendulum and one copy of Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon. Now I don't run any fusion cards to spells, I mean per se, but with these two, you don't need it whatsoever. Because, first of all, Beast Eyes Pendulum Dragon works as a contact fusion. It specifically states that by tributing the monsters you need, you do not need to use polymerization or anything like that. So that's another purpose that Monkey Board has in the deck because it is a beast type monster. You can tribute that and your Odd Eyes monster. No, yeah, your Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon and to create beast eyes, 3000 attack. So pretty, pretty tough overall. And whenever it attacks, you could burn your opponent for the amount of attack that the beast monster had. So every time this attacks, you burn your opponent for a thousand damage also on top of everything else so very very good i'm so glad we finally got this card an odd eyes vortex this card is amazing make it with an odd eyes monster and a pendulum monster so you can make this with odd eyes saber if you wish but the, well not well you could if you ran the monster but here's my way, main way of putting it out with two copies of odd eyes absolute dragon so this kind of works as utopia so whenever you, dis you detach a material, you can get any attack, whether it be yours or your opponent's, and you can special, special summon an Odd Eyes monster from the graveyard. This includes a fusion monster if it's already there, or a synchro. Any Odd Eyes monster in the graveyard, you can special summon. But the other effect of this is once this is destroyed, you can special summon an Odd Eyes from your extra deck, which again, includes fusion. So that serves as a purpose there and it's all and the odd eyes absolutely serves as another purpose for a combo which i'll show you momentarily but this card also amazing as soon as it's special summon acts as almost like it's the card i'm thinking of compulse that's right compulse evacuation device by setting one monster on top of the from from the field to the hand and that's a match of 25 3000 defense very very good also during their turn if they were to, well, during either turn, if your opponent were to activate spell, trap, or monster effect, you shuffle a face-up pendulum monster from your extra deck into, the, into your main deck and negates the effect. So, very, very amazing right there. Now, I'm gonna get into more of the X seeds. I run one Ebon Illusion Magician, one Castell, one Abyss Dweller, Degustal Emerald, Red Eyes Flare Metal, Big Eye, Dark Rebellion XYZ Dragon. Let me just organize those a bit here. Norito More Leader and Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon. Now, first of all, I'm just gonna go through them quickly here. Digustal, staple X Seed in any Dark Magician deck. I only run once because it's the Pendulum version, but any non-Pendulum version of the deck. Ooh, that's a bad glare there. Yeah, any non-Pendulum version, I wouldn't recommend even running this at two. It's just too amazing not to run. Being able to detach and special summon Dark Magician from the graveyard or shuffling three monsters into the deck, drawing a card, just amazing overall. Abyss Dweller, also amazing because as we know, Burning Abyss, PK Fire are top amazing decks right now. And this is really great for dealing with them. Castell, just any just typical rank four. Matter of fact, in my opinion, is one of the stable rank fours to run. Just be able to get, just, just shuffle any monster you can control to the deck. Very, very good. And also Dark Rebellion, just when I need pure raw power, just when I need to just overpower something where like you can't take your way out of it. So Dark Rebellion just definitely helps with that. Now I'm gonna get into more of these cards. Odd Eyes Flare Metal. First of all, I just wanna give a quick little shout out to my friend Bryce for hooking me up with this card. He goes to the local card shop I, we, I go to a lot. Blech, tongue tied today. But yeah, he was actually really nice enough to hook me up with this card. So if you're watching this buddy, again, thank you so much for this. Has really helped me a lot. And it works as a really good defensive play where you can make turn one if you end up going first. Then like every time your opponent activates an effect, burns them for 500. So very, very good against the Monarchs and burning a best matchup. And even Cosmos if you get this off turn one. So put that there. Ebon Illusion. Now this, it's a little bit of a pricey card fluctuating between 20 and $30. But I'm telling you guys right now, this card right here will win you games. 
And not to mention, it is getting a reprint in either the special edition of The Dark Illusion or Dragons of Legends Unleashed. I'm not sure, I keep forgetting which one it is, I'm not sure about it, but one of those special editions, this will be reprinted as a promo. So basically, you detach and you get special any vanilla spellcaster from your hand or your deck. Usually I mean Dark Magician, but it can also get out Dragon Pulse and Dragon Pit Magician. And whenever a vanilla spellcaster declares an attack, this effect activates and you can banish any card your opponent controls. So, and very careful wording on that. Say you're in the mirror match, which I actually just found out a couple months ago. If you're, if, bleh, if you control this card and your opponent attacks you with a vanilla spellcaster, on their attack declaration, you can still activate this effect because it does not specify, it does not say it has to be during your battle phase. It could be your opponent's battle phase. And if they are not aware of this card, you could use your vanilla spellcaster against them and just banish any card they control. And it's the upon attack declaration, so the actual attack and damage will not go through. So overall, amazing card. I would actually run two of these if I could afford it, but I was lucky enough to get this card at $10 when it was still not worth much. And this was before the whole Oddest Magician thing was a thing, so I didn't think to get more than two, more than one, because I mainly had it for clutch purposes. Big Eye, another generic rank seven, detach, and you're able to control one of your opponent's monsters, though he can't attack that turn. So very, very good for taking control of one of their boss monsters and just winning the game. Norito, the more leader, very good for your level sixes to make into, being able to negate any spells or traps your opponent does. And also another hidden effect is that you can go from Norito to Ebon because this says two level seven level seven monsters or a rank six spellcaster XYZ. So Norito has multiple purposes in the deck. Very, very good. And now here's the crazy combo right here with Odd Eyes Rebellion that you can make with Jean K. So when he is when he's X Seed Summon with an XYZ monster as material, he blows up all your opponent's monsters that are level seven or less burns them, burns your opponent for a thousand life points each. And if it does that, this card, this 3000 attack card can attack your opponent three times. So basically, unless they have a way to stop this summon, yeah, this is almost like a win condition. Basically, you make this, oh, no Solemns, no Bottomless, anything like that. Oh, okay, I win, boom. So yeah, overall, just amazing. And even if you do make this and it doesn't end up getting, going through, and let's say even it gets destroyed. Once this gets destroyed, if you have any pendulum scales there, you could blow them all up and you could set them as a scale there. And you could search your deck for a pendulum scale and just set it right there. And yes, even though this is an XYZ monster, if it is face up on your extra deck, you could treat this as a level and special summon just like any other XYZ. Uh, XYZ, any pendulum monster whatsoever. So this card is just amazing. Again, heavily overlooked, a little bit hard to, to make, I admit, but once you make it and you pull it off, you basically have game. So that's amazing. And now last, I'm gonna go into my two synchros, one Enlightenment Paladin and one Odd Eyes Meteor Burst Dragon. Now I go into him sometimes with Tuning Magician, but I mainly go into him. I mean, this, this guy's all right right here. So where if he's made with a magician pendulum monster, you could get out a spell card from your graveyard, add it to your hand. And whenever you destroy a monster, you could burn them equal to that monster's original attack. So, I mean, he's okay to make sometimes. Definitely not bad. But this is your main synchro play right here. So where this is synchro played, you could special summon one of your scales on the field. And you can just go into crazy XC plays, or even that. This is actually how I usually go into my Odd Eyes Rebellion is through that play right there. And also, an effect that a lot of people overlook is that during the battle phase, your opponent cannot activate monster effects. So let's say they try to like do something with their monsters that could cause you trouble. You show them that you can't do that with this, and they're like, "What?" Yeah, it's something that's very overlooked, and just yeah, you can really catch them off guard with this. So put that down. So that does it for my main deck and my extra deck. So now for my side deck quickly. First of all, one copy of Secret Village of the Spellcasters. Now this was my a main deck card for a while, but I realize that a lot of people run Spellcasters now. So, but if you do face a deck that does not have any Spellcasters, this is amazing because you can just lock them out of using any spells whatsoever. And for most decks, that's brutal. All right. 
So next up, three copies of Dark Magic Attack. Now some of these are just more fun things to add to the Dark Magician deck if you're able to. But this actually does serve quite a cool purpose to where if you control a Dark Magician, you blow up their entire back row and it does not target. Very important to know because a lot of cards protect from targeting. This doesn't target, this works as Harpy's Feather Duster. Just go boom. Say you pendulum summon just a Dark Magician and they have a lot of back row. They might not want to activate on just Dark Magician. Oh, that's nice. Boom, Dark Magic Attack, everything's gone. And this does include Pendulum Scales as well. So very important to know there. Next up to add some more fun to it, two copies of Thousand Knives. Now I'm having trouble getting a Rageki. Been having trouble for that for a while. So yeah, I just have a Thousand Knives in here for now just to destroy any one monster. And also again, just to have some fun with the deck because it's Dark Magician. You gotta be able to have fun with it. And next up, two copies of Odd Eyes Advent and two copies of Odd Eyes Gravity Dragon. Now, let me tell you something. This card is amazing against Monarchs. Like, if you side this for the Monarch matchup and you get this, it turns from an auto loss to an even matchup. Because, in fact, this is actually in my main deck for quite some time. And I know when it comes to rituals, most people would think to run like that, those thousand hand cards like Manju and Senju. But again, a point to know, Odd Eyes, Odd Eyes. These can all be searched with, these can be searched with Skullcrabet and Sky Iris. This can be searched with Sky Iris. So does not hurt the consistency of the deck at all. Matter of fact, if you want to run this in the main deck, I wouldn't blame you. It's very, very good. Whenever he special summon through the ritual, all your opponent's back row goes into their hand and they cannot activate cards to negate his effect. So very, very powerful. Not to mention this also works as Red Eyes Metal Flare to where it burns your opponent 500 for each effect. So overall, just an amazing card. Like I said, really, really good against Monarchs. That's actually how I managed to defeat a Monarch player three games in a row because of this card. So do not underestimate this card at all. And now next up for the Cosmo matchup, I run two copies of Artifact Lancia. Now, if you have Imperial Iron Wall and you prefer to run that, go right ahead. It's just, I personally prefer Lancia because say you play the Imperial Iron Wall, all you gotta do is an MST or Twin Twister and that's gone and they can just banish the cards again. But this acts as a quick effect when you send to the graveyard and for that whole turn, they cannot banish. So again, this is just more my preference to deal with Cosmos, but if you prefer Imperial Iron Wall, then I'm not saying it's bad at all. Go right for it. It's a very good card against them. Now, for my final side deck, I run one copy of Dark Magician Knight and two Knights title. Now, this was actually in the main deck that got me top eight because a lot of people were underestimating this card to where you could use it as Pendulum Call Fodder to send to the graveyard and search off to you two stuff. Then you activate Knight's title, tribute to Dark Magician, and you can special summon this from your hand, deck, or graveyard. So you, you could just go on recycling it like that. And that's actually the main reason I don't run Dark Magician to Chaos with Dedication to Light and Darkness in here. Because yes, that would be very good, but my main problem is that you can't recycle it like this. So just go off in there. So yeah, that about does it for my Dark Magician deck profile. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I Again, I put many, many, many months of effort into this deck. It's actually the one deck I've been working on the most. And I am just super excited for the support we're gonna, we're gonna get come August, so. This was at least the X, mainly the XYZ version of the deck. If you wanna go a more fusion build with like say, Eye of Tamias or Odd Eyes Fusion, you go right ahead. But I'm just gonna give you a little warning, those cards are a bit pricey, and a build like this would be a bit more cheaper to build. So again, if you wanna go the fusion build, you could go right ahead, you could do a lot of crazy stuff in there. But no, yeah, this is just the build I prefer, and this build has never let me down. So yeah, if you like this video, be sure to leave a like, thumbs up, and also comment your any opinions you have on the deck. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, feel free to say so. I appreciate all honest opinions. And also, if you're new to the channel, subscribe and support the Magician's Descendant. Okay, shameless advertising aside, this has been the MD. Thank you for sticking around for this profile. And I have many more coming for you guys. So catch you duelists later.